And so they have this iterative process of creating the right prompts and shaping the right guardrails and other code in order to get it to be like really useful in those situations. Open source has been a huge part of Langchain from ever since we got started. Obviously, it started as an open source package and it's evolved a lot over the years. We now have TypeScript packages, we now have Langchain and LangGraph. And so, you know, as we release 1.0 of these packages, it's a huge moment for us as a company. And so really excited to be here today uh, talking with a few core members about what, what these releases are and, and why they're important. Uh, my name's Harrison, co-founder CEO of Langchain and uh, started off doing a lot of open source work, but now a lot of that's done by the folks here at this table. So do you guys want to do a quick intros of yourselves? Yeah, sounds great. Um, my name is Sydney. I'm an open source engineer here at Langchain, and I work on Langchain and Langgraph Python. Yeah, uh, my name is Hunter. I'm uh, also an open source engineer here. Uh, I work on the TypeScript versions of Langchain and Langgraph. And I'm Will, a uh, founding engineer here, and I work a lot on Langgraph Python and its internals. Awesome. So. I'll, I'll maybe start with some brief context on on how we thought about Langchain at the start, and then you know we can evolve into Langgraph and all the stuff that's coming now down the down the pipe with 1.0. So so when Langchain launched uh, nearly three years ago, there was really two core parts of it. One was a set of integrations. At the time, it was actually a little bit limited. It was you know OpenAI, Cohere, Hugging Face. I think those were the models. But like th there were these components and integrations for these core building blocks. And so models we talked about, that's one of them. There was also vector stores. There was document loaders. There was all these components. And then the other thing was these, these high-level interfaces um, that made it really easy to get started. And so this would be like RAG, five lines of code, SQL, five lines of code. And, and this is where the industry was. So again, this was three years ago. This was a month before ChatGPT. No one, there was a few people building this, this stuff, but not nearly the, the same amount that, that are today. And so a lot, of, a lot of what we built and a lot of what we focused on at the time was making it as easy as possible to get started. And that focus and priority has shifted over the years as, as we've seen the industry mature and people want to go from prototype to production. And I think there's, there's probably no better example of that than when we launched Langgraph. It was, it was about a year and a half after we launched uh, Langchain. It built off of a lot of the learnings that we had. And Will, you were kind of like a core part of that. And so do you maybe want to talk about why we launched Langgraph and, and what Langgraph is and how, how we thought about it? Yeah, sure thing. Um, when we were building Langgraph initially, we kept two aspects in mind. One of them was that aspect of controllability that you were touching on there, where with Langchain, uh, we made it really easy to get started. We had lots of ways to use it, but people as they transitioned into production wanted a lot more ability to customize it. And we wanted Langgraph to make it as easy as writing regular software. And maybe like expanding on that, like I mentioned like RAG and five lines of code, like that's obviously making a ton of assumptions about what's under the hood. So like, you know, there was there was hidden props and there there was, uh, you know, we, we now have this term called context engineering, but there was this hidden context engineering that was that was getting done. And again, that has pros and cons, made it really easy to get started. But then as you wanted to customize it and as you wanted to, to, to modify it, um, you, you needed lower level controllability. And, and maybe it's worth touching on, like, why is this controllability so important? Yeah, I think there's really a gap between model capabilities and the reliability whenever you scale it to production um, along a number of axes, like one being just the number of users trying to interact with it in so many ways. You run into these cases, you hadn't anticipated it before. And so you have this iterative process of creating the right prompts and shaping the right guardrails and other code in order to get it to be like really useful in those situations. The other axis I'd say is like the long running agents. And so as they get more useful, people are trying to do a lot more with those. Um, but then you open up a lot of doors for them to go off the rails a little bit. So you want a little bit more ability to control and have these like interfaces and interaction patterns um, that enable people to get a lot of useful work done. Yeah, and, and, and so the, the, the interfaces and interaction patterns and production and long running, that kind of gets to the second point of what we you know, focused on a lot in Langgraph, which is the runtime. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, totally. Um, so we allowed the control, but then within that, there's all these utilities that we think are generally useful. And so when we're thinking about the runtime, there are core, some core central um, principles of it with things like uh, a durable execution environment so that as agents are working for long periods of time, if there's an error, we don't have to cancel the entire run. Um, and then if there is an error, it can be recovering from checkpoints because we're caching that application state as it goes over time. Um, 
as these agents are working for long periods of time, users might be impatient and want to see what's happening and interact with it. And so adding streaming as this native first class citizen within the framework was really important and useful for all these different types of apps. Uh, so the, the runtime really uh, was something that we had been able to anticipate through our interactions with the community uh, and powers all these interesting new features and new experiences we see people doing. Yeah, I, I, I remember like, uh, you know, streaming and human in the loop. We, we, we didn't know this when we started Langchain because, um, you know, Langchain was, was very basic and, and, and we kind of had to retrofit and add those in. And, um, and, and when we were doing Langgraph, we kind of paused a little bit and we're like, OK, what are all these things? that are like, you, you can do, you can do like, like human in the loop's a great example. You can do that super easily prototyping because you just put like uh, input command in Python and, and, but that doesn't scale to production, obviously. And so as, as we were building the uh, land graph, we were thinking about, okay, we see that human in the loop is important. It's easy to do in prototyping, hard to do in production. How can we architect kind of like a runtime uh, that, that enables this? And so I think that was a, that was a big part of the of, of kind of like the purpose of Langgraph. And I think that's a big part of why we also chose to rewrite Langchain on top of Langgraph. So maybe kind of like pivoting to that, like I think one of the key parts of Langchain 1.0 is that it's built on top of Langgraph, uh, but it also kind of like marries the ease of getting started that was in Langchain from the start. Because one of the things we did hear about Langgraph was you got all this controllability, but hard to get started. So how do we think about combining those things in Langchain 1.0? Yeah, so in Langchain 1.0, we want it to be the easiest place to get started with generative AI, but specifically like building agents. And so we've seen a lot of successful use cases from users and customers built on that Langgraph runtime, um, you know, with human in the loop and persistence and durable execution. Uh, we wanted to bring those runtime features to Langchain, um, but also, as you mentioned, uh, you know, it's it's a little bit hard to get started with Langgraph if you aren't used to kind of nodes and edges and workflow primitives. And in our create agent abstraction in Langchain, it's as simple as a few lines of code to get started with that classic like model tool calling loop. Okay, yeah, so you mentioned create agent abstraction, like expand on that, what is that? Yeah, so kind of the central pillar of our new Langchain 1.0 release is this create agent abstraction. It's new in a sense, but also it's actually quite battle tested. So. Um, Users of Langgraph are familiar with Create React Agent, which is a uh, you know React Agent abstraction built on Langgraph, and then before that actually came the like Chat Agent ex executor for our like OG Langchain. Fans. Yeah, I think Langchain like the the zero point zero point eight version had that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's new in the sense that it's uh, significantly improved, but it's also like the same core pattern that we've seen used and tested and um, valued. Yeah, and I think I think like you know when when we were doing Langchain early, there was all these different chains and all these different agents because there were all these different patterns. It was early, and 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 I think over time we've seen that like a lot of the long tail stuff is just easier to do in Langgraph from the start. But then there is this core pattern, and I think most people have kind of converged on this idea of an agent as an LLM running in a loop calling tools. Um, and there and so there's this core pattern that we want to really like centralize around. But at the same time, like the, the reason that not everything is this core pattern is because there are modifications that you want to make to, to the loop. And, that, and that's constantly been kind of like one of the criticisms of, of Langchain is it like gets in the way of this controllability. I mean, that's why we built kind of like Langgraph. Um, and so one of the things that I'm really excited about and would love to hear you talk about is middleware. Um, so what is middleware and how does it solve this problem? Yeah, we're really excited about middleware. So middleware allows you as a developer to add in additional logic at any point in that core agent loop. And so that is what makes this core loop extensible to a variety of different applications. Um, so I'll give a couple of examples. I think that'll help to Please, kind of yeah. illustrate value here. So before your model call, you might want to summarize past conversation history. Um, you know, we, we talk a lot about long running agents, right? That means tool calling loops that get super long. And so message history can be quite long. And in order to have an effective conversation with the LLM, you need to summarize things. So that's one example of uh, pre-built middleware that we offer. Um, another example is our human in the loop middleware. Um, so if you have risky tool calls um, or expensive tool calls, you might want human approval or edits on those tool calls before they're executed. Um, and so that's you know a hook that would go after the model call. But we also really believe in this pattern of kind of hooks around the agent loop. And so we make it really easy to build your own middleware as well. Um, so 
if you're looking to customize a dynamic prompt or dynamic tools, um, you can do that through middleware as well. Uh, we think this is what differentiates Langchain as an agent framework, the amount of customizability that is pa- baked into middleware. Yeah. Hunt, Hunter, Will, you guys got any favorite middleware? Yeah, one of the ones I'm super excited about is the dynamic model middleware, which I mean, the basic like one liner for that is is based on context. I can dynamically pick which model I'm using uh, when I'm going to make a new message or the next point in the loop. Um, I, I think that's super interesting just because like I don't think it's too controversial to say that uh, there isn't like a champion model anymore. Like I think if you roll back the tape like a year ago, it seemed like every other month there was a new model that everybody was using and everybody was parading around. Yeah, um, constantly changes. They're good at different things. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't think that's super much the case anymore. Like, I think it's uh, more so. Like, I don't think it's too like crazy to say that like you would go to Anthropic for like coding tasks, or you would go to OpenAI for the reasoning things, or Google for multimodal. Like, we've kind of seen the like in a weird way like these specialties come out for each of these models. And I think as we're talking to builders, like that optionality between models was one the original charter for Langchain. Um, so like being able to enable that, like that's how you stay on the the bleeding edge of agent building. And now this this the dynamic model middleware will you dynamically switch that based on based on user context, which is pretty cool. I mean, let's let's stay on models for a little bit. So like as you mentioned, those were one of the core parts of Langchain from the start. Uh, we're also doing some big enhancements to them in 1.0. Uh, do you want to talk about content blocks and what those are and why people should care? I think uh, content blocks, what they are is effectively like our standard representation for the for the content of a message which and maybe just interjecting yeah. here a little bit like messages first of all those didn't exist when langchain started yeah. so like langchain used to be like string in string out and then evolved into like a list of messages in message out and and those messages had this content field and it used to be a string and now you're saying it's something more complicated and we're standardizing it yeah like i think at the beginning of the year um you know reasoning models started becoming the big new thing multimodal made a lot of advancements and the way that like uh, these model providers expressed that was uh by adding what they call like content blocks inside of a message um but you know as those capabilities have expanded uh every single one every provider has their own opinion on what those content blocks should be like yeah, and not only it, like it's different formats, but also like j- they just have different server side tools. Yeah. So like they they can't be the same because yeah. they have different things, which makes yeah. it really annoying. Yeah, exactly. And like when we're talking with builders, like that's a core complaint that we hear is um, when I'm building an application around it, and I don't know what the shape of messages is going to be like. You know, just because like I might change a model out and everything changes, like that's a really bad state to be in. I remember running into this like right as you guys were working on it, which was I, I was switching uh, agent I had from OpenAI to Anthropic, and the the format of the messages that came back as they were streaming with tool calls was just different, and it broke all my streaming code. <laughs> so that was that was not fun at all. Yeah. Um, m- maybe kind of like talking about agents a little bit, like when we launched LangGraph, it pretty quickly became one of the way the way that we recommended folks to build agents because of the controllability and the runtime that's built in. Um, as we mentioned, there there are some downsides. It's harder to get started with. And and so now we've got Langchain. It's built on top of Langgraph, so it's got that production-ready runtime. It's easier to get started with. It's got this like agent class. When should people use Langchain versus Langgraph? I would recommend people get started with Langchain after uh, this new rewrite. We've made it a lot easier to get started. Um, and we've raised the ceiling on what you can do with the create agent primitive. So both the floor is lowered and the ceiling has been raised. I think when you start to hit the ceiling is when you want extremely custom workflows. Um, and what I mean by that is if you want to design workflows that have deterministic components and agentic components, then LangGraph might be the right place for you. Additionally, one nice thing about uh, LangGraph is that things are super composable. So if you want deterministic steps and agentic steps, you can use create agent from LangChain to build uh, really functional, useful agents, and then plug those into your existing workflows as well. Yeah, I think you said a word there that I like workflows. I think like, like yeah, the Langchain agent is very much an agent. Um, it's autonomous, it runs. Like there are places where you want determinism and steps and workflows. So you can get a little bit of that with middleware now. But if you just like explicitly want that, then Langraph's great for that. And Langraph's great for anything on the spectrum. So like, as you mentioned, you can take these agents and use them as a step in the workflow. And so then like, if you've got a workflow made up of agents, is that an agent? Is that a workflow? It's somewhere in the middle. And I think that's actually where LangGraph really shines 
Any other things that you would recommend for folks to look into when deciding where to get started? Yeah, I think for like the little bit more of the, the, the experience builders, uh, you know, there, there's been a ton of frameworks that have popped up that uh, is sort of like centralized around this idea of agent building. And I think the industry at large has sort of centered on the idea that an agent is a pretty basic tool calling loop. So when you use uh, uh, LangChain and you want to get more familiar with like sort of these more advanced context engineering or agent building topics, um, like the thing that's most conceptually transferable is uh, create agent. Um, but, you know, as we mentioned, like there are cases where uh, maybe you want some more determinism, maybe you want your agent to think a little bit more complex. Uh, in that case, that's when you sort of uh, step into LangGraph and all that has to offer. Cool. So, so we're launching LangGraph 1.0, LangChain 1.0. As we think about these releases and what we can do with them and what come next, what are you guys most excited about? I'm really excited to see what the community comes up with in terms of custom middleware. Uh, we've worked pretty hard on a couple of pre-built ones. I mentioned summarization. We have support for dynamic model, tools, prompt, kind of all the classics um, and human in the loop. But really, middleware is incredibly extensible and it's composable too. You can have a simple agent loop with lots of different middleware. Um, and so I think, uh, yeah, very excited to see what community members come up with and what kind of steps they think are really important for agentic flows. Um, and I'm sure that will kind of have a ripple effect on the already really large link chain ecosystem. Yeah, building off of that, I'm excited for both ends of the spectrum. I'm excited for people who are like serious developer focusing bare metal, trying to push the envelope on the longest running agents doing useful work as possible. And all this stuff that we're providing, I think makes it easier to go further with a more reliable runtime. But on the other end of the spectrum, and something that I've always loved about LangChain is that we're like some, a lot of people's first introduction to AI and even to just programming in general in Python. And I think that the agent abstraction is so like, accessible to someone like me and, and just to other people while also being very powerful um, that I want to see all the ways that people can compose these high level building blocks into like really useful work as well without having to go and, and like think too hard about all the different you know abstractions within it. Yeah, I think kind of building on that, uh, like the term context engineering is something that's, you know, been familiarized in like the last few months. Uh, this is like with the create agent and the middleware API, like I think that is the first like real abstraction that I've seen where rubber meets the road, so to speak, in terms of like, oh, you can actually apply context engineering. Um, like I think this is the first real practical case of being able to do context engineering reliably. Yeah, I mean, I think the, you know, the the idea of this like core loop that's running an agent is 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 clearly common, but it enforces context engineering. Yeah. And I think you need outlets and escape hatches and things like that. And so I, I, I agree that middleware is a great way to do that. One thing that uh, we were talking about earlier, Hunter, that I, that I think is is probably uh, super interesting to look into is is uh, all the UI UXs around these agents and starting to think we're doing a little bit on kind of like, you know, some front end hooks for what that looks like. Streaming, obviously, key component of kind of like LangGraph and now, and now you know, powers LangChain as well. And, and, and so I think there's just a ton to be discovered there. Um, and and we're investing a lot more on the JavaScript side of things as well. And I think that allows to create a lot of these full stack agents all in JavaScript, front end, back end, figure out the interaction patterns and, and really explore that. So yeah, lots of lots of really exciting things in, in the 1.0 releases, lots of good things to try out. Thank you all for walking folks through them. Highly encourage everyone to, you know, pip install or npm install the the latest versions and and give us any feedback as it as it comes up. This is a big step for, 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 for LangChain and we're really excited about it.